Um, well, my research concerns the application of polymers in biology and, and medicine. So we're working at the moment on three topics um, which um, come from my sort of historical interests in um, areas of polymer chemistry and things that have developed recently. So um, one area of our research concerns making porous polymers, porous materials. So we're um, developing materials as scaffolds for tissue engineering. Um, so these scaffolds are biodegradable, biocompatible, and we've recently discovered a way of making such biodegradable scaffolds from a, an emulsion templating um, method, which um, for the first time uh, allows us to make fully biodegradable materials. We're quite excited about that. Um, and this is a paper that actually was published in Palmer Chemistry, um, I think at the end of last year. So, um, so that's one area. Um, another area is uh, polymers with sugars attached to the backbone, glycopolymers, um, which is something I've been working on for, I guess, about 10 years now. Um, and that's progressing very nicely. So we've got now um, the ability to make a range of different architectures. What we're interested in at the moment is making uh, polymers that will assemble into vesicles, um, polymer zones. So, so these polymer zones will then be decorated with sugars on the external surface and we've got a project that's just starting which will look at how such vesicles interact with um, species such as nanoparticles which are functionalised such that they'll interact with the sugar. So what we're hoping to do is create um, vesicles that will then be able to internalise nanoparticles. Um, so that's something that's just started um, actually just this month stock started. And then the, the other thing we're working on, which is something that's developed uh, in the last two or three years, is a polypeptides project. So we make polypeptides by ring opening polymerization of N-carboxyl hydrides. And we're looking at making um, uh, drug delivery platforms for these materials. Uh, the application we've got in mind is drug delivery to the eye. So um, we're working on a, a European project that involves um, chemistry groups, materials groups, um, but also pharmacologists and um, ophthalmologists. So that's about six months in. It's a four-year project. So, um, so it's early days, but um, I'm sure we'll be able to develop some, some nice um, delivery systems. Um, an interest, a growing interest in biology, I guess. Um, I had no training in biology, but um, when I started my academic career, uh, I started to become more interested in, uh, in biology, biological sciences, um, and biomedicine. Um, and it just grew from there, really, and it kind of took over my research interests, slowly but surely. So now, Pretty much everything we do has got a biological um, application or um, is at least bio-inspired in some way. Um, well, I think, um, generally speaking, I, I think that the area of the application of polymers in biology is, I would say, the hottest area. Um, we're now, so my background is in polymer synthesis and the synthetic community now has the skills to make a, a, a very wide range of controlled and functional architectures. So um, there's the ability now to make all kinds of um, bioactive, bio-inspired, bio-responsive systems and people are now taking this further and further into the realms of um, interacting with biological species, interacting with cells making conjugates with proteins, um, making systems that will interact with, with viruses, for example. Um, so, uh, in my mind, that's, that is the, the hottest day. But that there are other things coming along which are, um, which are also very interesting, not necessarily bio-related. One thing that I think is particularly interesting and promising is um, uh, sequence control in, <coughs> excuse me, in polymer synthesis. So being able to 
um, to, to control the primary sequence of the polymer chain and um, getting towards, I guess, the, the, um, a system like proteins where you have exquisite control of amino acid sequence in a polypeptide chain. So that's, that's been a, a, a huge challenge for the synthetic community for a long time, but now there are quite significant inroads being made in that area. Right, well, um, we've actually published three papers. So the most recent one was um, an invited um, contribution to a forthcoming issue in bioconjugates. Um, so the simple answer is, well, I was invited to, to submit that one. The previous one, the previous one was a review um, on um, glycopolymer therapeutics. And we chose polymer chemistry for that one because um, it seemed to, to fit the scope of the journal very nicely. So it was about polymer synthesis, but also with a strong um, bioapplication slant to it. Mm -hmm. and the first paper was the, the article I mentioned earlier about uh, making a degradable scaffold. So again, this is it's very much polymer chemistry. You know, it's, it's um, using, well, in that case, it's using thiolene and thiolene chemistry to make um, porous polymeric materials. So again, polymer chemistry seemed like the ideal home for it. Um, so I think polymer chemistry, you know, having seen the quality of the articles that are coming through, then um, I was very happy to, to submit my work um, to this journal and I'm very keen to, to see it succeed. I can't really think of anything that I would rather be doing, um, at least nothing that would pay me a regular salary. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, when I was um, when I was young and when I was um, you know starting university, I, I wanted to be in a band, but um, it's obviously very difficult to, to be successful and make money in that in that area. So um, so I can't think of anything that I would rather be doing um, than. Okay, um, well there are several, um, at past I would say Einstein because he just thought completely differently from everybody else. He invented a completely new area of science. Um, more recently I think of current scientists, um, I very much admire the work of uh, George Whiteside. I think if you look at what he's done over his career, he's made Tremendous contributions in a, actually a very large number of very different areas and he continues to do so. So um, in terms of the, the quality of the work and the diversity of the, the areas in which he works, I think George Whitesides is really one of the, the best scientists around at the moment.